What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Cool Colas here, and you are now tuning into a new episode of the Pro Black Blurred Kingdom Podcast. Today's episode was something that I originally wasn't going to do because I made a post on Instagram to say, hey, y'all, I'm not about to have no podcast episodes this week, so don't expect anything until the next week. But I changed my mind, and I changed my mind because today is Malcolm X Day. And because today is Malcolm X Day, I'm going to talk about a lot of different things surrounding that. First of all, I want to talk a little bit about Malcolm X himself and why I believe a lot of people don't know or like Malcolm X, some myth around some myths, sorry, some myths around him. I want to talk a little bit about Disney Plus and this so-called Malcolm X and MLK special and my problems with it. And then I'll go into a little bit more about Disney because it kind of everything I'm talking about kind of ties into Disney Plus and this whole idea of them being this new liberal woke media channel. So let's get into it. So as I said, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Malcolm X Day, which is a holiday we all know is seldom celebrated in Western society. And I want to tell you all the truth on the matter when it comes to him. They don't make leaders like Malcolm X or Martin Luther King Jr. anymore. And I want to put the focus especially on Malcolm X, though, for several reasons outside of it being his day. Malcolm X was with the program 100% all the way through. He never once considered integration as a method of black liberation. He was not about peace and so-called equality as a lot of you all like to champion for. And his motto was by any means necessary. He gave some of the most important lessons around black empowerment that we as black people will ever receive. And Malcolm X Day is important because it gives us a day to celebrate a man who was completely unwavering about empowering his people. Now, I don't talk too much about my personal stuff besides the occasional story here or there but growing up i didn't really have role models for real and i still at this point don't truly have full admiration for anyone and you know with context i'm speaking about those who i actually have physically met in person but anyway i have great admiration for malcolm x and his ideals and in the message he has preached Malcolm X was a fearless black man who stood his ground, especially against white supremacy and those who opposed him. He has laid out a great template in being a paradigm for pro-black black men, and his oration skills have allowed his message to be heard clearly even to this day. I won't go too much into his autobiography per se, but I do want to talk about a few things that I've noticed. For those of you who have been paying attention, notice how vehemently MLK Day is celebrated by everyone and how no one will ever make a whisper about Malcolm X. That's done because white folks have nothing to attach themselves to when it comes to a day that's about Malcolm X. He was here solely for the empowerment of black people and in the eyes of white society, that makes him an enemy. So what people have chosen to do with his legacy is one of two things. They either choose to seldom speak on him in the hopes that we forget about what he's done and what he said, or we never know what he did, or they try to rewrite or misrepresent the narrative of what happened with him and who he was. As for the second piece of what I said there, we will get into that in a minute when I dive into myths surrounding his legacy. But as for MLK, white folks purposely glaze over some of his later speeches about leading his people into a burning building with immigration and simply attach themselves to his ha have a dream speech, which was a grave mistake really on MLK's part. They, in a way, use MLK as a black puppet who can echo the sentiments of so-called progressives, or as we call them now, white liberals, that the way to true justice is by coming together through integration. 
you know, forget black liberation and reparation. It's all about starting over with them. Never mind the idea that white folks slaughtered, beat, raped, pilfered, and pillaged our ancestors. Never mind the debts that they owe to us. We should call it even Steven and just be good to one another and move on. Isn't that what people like your girl Jane Elliott said? And yeah, you are going to have to research that. There's a YouTube video out there where she doesn't really try to champion for black reparations. She says that the Native Americans come before us as if we're different and we're not the real Native Americans. And then talks about how we need to just move forward. So yes, Jane Elliott did do that. So go look it up. I, I know y'all want to champion her because you think that she's the white savior, but just, just look it up. Anyway, now don't get me wrong. MLK wanted and advocated for reparations just like Malcolm X did, but America retells the same story over and over again about MLK having this candy land dream of white and black people hugged up in a fake abusive relationship scenario. Malcolm was never with that shit though. He knew the liberals and what they were about and what their getup was. And because he didn't go with it, he was never championed for it in the same way. Hell, notice how Western society acknowledges MLK as a hero so much that they give you a day off of work. And Malcolm X, his day isn't even known in some cases as an actual holiday. Hell, Today at work, I literally had to insert my own damn Malcolm X Day text on my calendar just because it wasn't even there. And that's because our society doesn't see him as a hero overall. And don't get me wrong, I'm not upset about it. I don't give a damn what white people think about our leaders for real. My issue is that so many of our people are so conquered by white supremacy that they too follow suit and don't recognize the legacy of Malcolm X. It's like it falls on deaf ears for them because it did for white society. I've only seen a handful of people even talk about Malcolm X today. As a matter of fact, most of the people who I know that did already have some type of pro-black or conscious mindset. But everyone else who doesn't, I didn't hear him say a peep. Again, I don't give a damn what white folks post about him. All their asses will do is just gentrify the hell out of Malcolm X Day anyway, just like they are probably about to do with Juneteenth or have been doing. I think there was even like a video I saw where like they have like dollar store Juneteenth paraphernalia now. So now they're trying to capitalism Juneteenth out. And, you know, I have a lot of other opinions on Juneteenth, you know. Um, a, few, a few years ago, I wrote an article on what I thought about Juneteenth, as a matter of fact. But my gripe with things like Juneteenth is that it's not a holiday that's bred by our people. It was a holiday that was given to us. And I don't piss or spit on it, so don't get me wrong, because we have to have some form of culture, as the great Dr. Claude Anderson has stated. But it is not something our people made on their own accord. I mean, like, just just wait till, like, June 19th comes up. I bet you got white folks right now thinking about how they're going to turn Juneteenth into Cinco de Mayo for black folks. They're probably up there walking into some gentrified-ass soul food spot and shit and talking about some, hey, uh, uh, you all got any Juneteenth specials today? Yeah, I I would love your, your collard greens and your fried chicken. I would love a, a, a side of your macaroni and cheese. Shit, it, it'd probably be like $25 for, for two s small ass seasonless pieces of chicken and some watery ass box macaroni and the greens would probably be sweet as hell. Ugh. I, I could just picture it. <laughs> anyway, I want to now get onto the myths about Malcolm X. There are a lot of myths, as I said, about our brother Malcolm X, and I think we should have a conversation about a few of them. First of all, Malcolm X is sometimes described by many as a civil rights icon and leader. Malcolm X did not have a belief in liberal integration, as I stated, nor was he about nonviolent civil disobedience. Civil rights was originally about 
how whites can repay and repair the way blacks have been impacted due to massacre, enslavement, and mistreatment of our ancestors and slavery. And quickly over time, it became a movement that was infested with benign neglect and included everyone who was considered quote unquote oppressed, which now threw non-black immigrants into the mix, women into the mix, and other marginalized individuals into the mix. Malcolm X knew the get up and wasn't getting down with the direction of civil rights. He wasn't for civil rights or the direction that it was taking. Malcolm X was known by many to have changed his stance on black empowerment. So this is now my second stance at this point, my second myth. Malcolm X was also known by many to have changed his stance on black empowerment after his journey to Mecca and champion for all people instead of just blacks. So that was the myth. That's extremely false. They forget to tell the story that he actually traveled to many other places outside of Mecca, still preaching about black empowerment, even upon his return. And what they don't tell you is that he was really going to different places all around the world, preaching black empowerment and continuing the message, but also meeting other black people along the way from all over the world. They try to paint him as angry and a misguided Negro who wasn't seeing shit clearly. And when he came back after quote unquote clearing his head, he got his mind right. They couldn't change the brother's mind to feed for him to feed into their bullshit. So they tried to book break his legacy after his death. Another myth is that he was killed by the nation of Islam. And I think this is why they kept trying to wrap up this idea that a conflict between him and Elijah Muhammad and the NOI existed and how all of this led to his assassination. That's why they wanted to paint the NOI as a villain group that contributed to quote unquote black on black crime. You always hear about that shit all the time. This painted the idea that black folks couldn't get together and we cause our own detriment. The truth is that In a lot of these types of situations, there are informants who get planted in the black community and they get clicked in with the government to take our leaders, to take out our leaders. And we don't have a strong enough backing of our leaders to prevent these types of things from going on. And this was prevalent in the situation with Fred Hampton and the Black Panthers, where William O'Neill was a carjacker that caught up with, got caught up with the police and was put on a mission to get the Black Panthers set up in modern, and set up in, uh, and set up so that, that they can get caught by the police. And in modern day times, think about what happened with Nipsey Hussle. He was gunned down. And he was gunned down by somebody who is suspected to be an informant. I don't know if you heard about, uh, by the way, I want to talk about this really quick. I don't know if you heard about Eugene Roberts, but he was around on the day of Malcolm X's assassination and was said to have grown, grown close with Malcolm. And he infiltrated his inner security. He also went to on to do the same thing to the Black Panther community as well. There was also a man named Raymond Woods, who was an NYPD officer, a black guy. So both of these people are black, by the way. And he was seen departing when this assassination took place. What's interesting is he ended up getting cancer in 2011, and he thought he was going to die. So on his deathbed, he had a confession letter that he wrote. And he talked a lot about his participation in Malcolm X's death in this letter. He actually didn't die in 2011, or ironically, he actually died in in 2020. So he wrote this thinking that he was going to go out in 2011. So he had to sit with this actually another nine years. Basically, he confessed to entrapping Malcolm's security so that he would be vulnerable by himself. He did this on what he thought again, was his deathbed, and he got to explain and then talked about how the police made him do all this horrible shit and how he regrets what he did and how he is asking for remorse. And he talked about how he was told that he had to infiltrate all these so-called civil rights organizations and all this other shit. And meanwhile, Thomas Hagen, 
was one of the people who was accused of killing him. I mean, even like I Googled it the other day just to see like if that if it, who would pop up as his killer, as Malcolm X's killer, and Thomas Hagen popped up there. And he was a part of the Nation of Islam. So they've been running with that Nation of Islam being the killers of Malcolm X shit for quite a while. And he didn't do it. The real criminals here are the black informants that were working with the police. And again, this is actually going on today. There are a lot of informants out there who are trying to get rid of people who they feel are or could be strong black leaders. And again, that's why people like Nipsey Hussle aren't around anymore. And you know, with the Thomas Hagen thing, if I was him and his family, I would sue the fuck out of the NYPD for that. You know, he was one out of three men who were convicted of the of the murder, including uh, a man named Khalil Islam and Muhammad Aziz. And two of the three men were exonerated. But it's like, damn, four decades later for some shit that you didn't even fucking do. That's crazy. And, you know, see, if if y'all mess around too damn much, you're going to go ahead and let Disney tell the story of civil rights leaders, quote unquote, such as Malcolm X and MLK. Because Disney Plus, they came out with some stuff they, and, and they said that they wanted to do a special, you know, on MLK and Malcolm X and their, so, their legacy. So I read this article recently and it was by The Collider. And in the letter it stated... And this is what I quote. In regards to the docudrama that will be made by MLK and Malcolm X called MLK X that will be coming out on season four of Genius, which is a Disney Plus anthology um, series. In the article, it states Disney Plus and National Geographic have announced that Reggie Rock by the Wood and Gina. Prince by the Wood will serve as executive producers on the upcoming fourth season of the original limited series Genius. This new season titled Genius MLK slash X will be a first for the docu docudrama f- uh, franchise as there will be two subjects of focus, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Genius MLK slash X will explore the formative years of the two civil rights icons as well as their pioneering accomplishments and dual philosophies. And I feel like they actually spelled dual wrong. I think they were trying to say D-U-A-L and they put D-U-E-L. I don't I don't know if that was on purpose, but I feel like they were trying to say dual as in like two different ones. But anyway, I wanted to make a quick correction. I said that the quotations for the article started when I started talking about the docudrama. I actually didn't start until I said Disney Plus and National Geographic have announced the Reggie Rock Bywood. That part, that's where actually the, the quote started. So I just wanted to make that correction real quick. Anyway, listen, cool click. Y'all have got to be on code and see how. This is an issue. The fact that they are calling Malcolm X a civil rights icon is already problematic. Y'all have got to stop championing and calling shit misinformation and all this other bullshit that you do in the name of white folks who don't have your best interests. Y'all love to champion black figures and even some conspiracies as soon as it becomes a Netflix or a Disney Plus special. But as soon as a prominent black figure on the grassroots or someone who is pro-black makes a statement about how our people, about about our people in a positive manner, then all of a sudden that person is a hotep. Again, the so-called monolithic folks, you know, the folks who champion how we are a monolith regardless of how uh, of who we are and how we're different. They disregard and ridicule pro-black and conscious people in our community. And they wonder why we don't really have any leaders. Your goofy beliefs get your leaders killed. And y'all got to watch out for when white media companies or when white folks in general try to tell our stories, especially a company like Disney with a very shady anti-black history who all of a sudden wants to be a white woke media company. This ain't adding up, family. Think about it. 
They said they are planning to implement a not so secret LGBT agenda. And here you Negroes are still arguing about whether or not there is a such thing as an LGBT agenda. Y'all better be on the lookout. They going to make a Malcolm X story and Malcolm X all of a sudden is going to be a gay man who had a love affair with Elijah Muhammad or something. Or if they don't buck break him, they'll be sure to insert some random LGBT character in that story to make an LGBT agenda present even in that story. I don't put it past them. I'm just going to be honest. I don't put it past them, y'all. And look at how even Netflix made another prominent which is another prominent white media company, how they told the Madam C.J. Walker story. They had to make it a statement about black men being oppressive villains against black women. They just couldn't help themselves. I mean, literally, though, Disney came out with an article, and now we're kind of segueing into the whole Disney and LGBT thing. I mean, literally, Disney came out with an article saying that they are going to make 50% of their characters gay. And they even took it a step further and said they are going to change up the vernacular at their theme parks. They're going to get rid of the he and she pronouns and start saying hello everyone or hello friends, as was stated in this article that was by the New York Post. I mean, look at how much they are pushing this. Why hasn't an overabundance of seeing our people in healthy relationships been pushed real heavy? So we done skipped over straight black folks all together. Mind you, they are marginalized by every white supremacist system with no laws, no tangibles or resources, and at the very least, great portrayals on television. And Disney has already made it a point to make it seem like LGBT issues need to be promoted as heavily as they're doing. And no, I don't want to hear, can't they both be champion for? Since both blacks and gays experience discrimination. This is already heavily problematic and disrespectful because blackness and the gay movement are nowhere near synonymous in our mistreatment. But even if we are just generalizing struggle the way we are promoted and showcased on television, it isn't to the, the same magnitude. No one, including Disney, is saying they are going to make their content 50% black. It's clear that they are not held in the same regard. So I will say Disney Plus did make a statement though about wanting to implement characters who were part of some racial minorities or whatever. They got, but really, let's be real, they, they ain't got nothing to do with black folks, but I just thought that that terminology should be noted, you know. Now, the not at all secret agenda or not at all secret gay agenda, let me say that, was stated and quoted by a gay black woman who was named Latoya Ravino. By the way, peep how they always make us the face of the LGBT agenda. She talked in a video about how when she got to Disney and was put in charge as a television animation pro uh, producer, meaning someone who produces children's content, she said that she was basically thrilled to add queerness to any and everything that she could find and how she knew no one would ever be able to stop her. All this is so interesting because they made sure to to not make sure not to make her or any other black person in charge of their so-called racial minority agenda or their black or a black agenda. They didn't even say black agenda as a matter of fact. And ironically, the leader who is of the diversity and inclusion section of Disney's content is a white woman named Vivian Ware. Is that not as backwards to y'all? Because that's how that kind of looks to me. But, you know, come on, like, we should know by now that this shit is purposeful. I mean, it's very obvious. It's, it's painfully obvious at this point. As I have said time and time before to many people, from strangers even to my best friend, you have got to be careful about the sources that you choose to trust, and follow, and believe. You also need to do a background check on the sources who run it and what they are about. There are too many agenda biases and misinformed individuals out there who aren't going to give you the clear cut truth because their opinion sounds better to them heard out loud. And it's easy for them to go and say it's the truth. Hell, even some of these so-called fact check sites are paid to post the opinions of those who pay them. Even Facebook has had a hand in paying one of the sites. And I forget the name of what it was, but 
I just want to say this too. I think there was an article out there where Facebook admits that most of the fact check sites are just opinions of leftist people. And this pace, uh, this post was made by the New York Post, just so you all know. Anyway, I say all this to say that you have to have something, you have to, you have something to truly be concerned about when a company like Disney, with a huge history of anti-blackness, makes the decision to say they are going to be producing animated content that our children watch, and superhero stuff, and woke content as well, quote-unquote woke content, that is. It also makes me think, why can't a guy like myself, a well-researched, thought-provoking, intelligent black man, be a source of interesting animated content and comics, as well as pro-black news, just like Disney is trying to be? And further, why are we so quick to follow those who are popular as if to say popular equates to accurate or even one with the best integrity. Meanwhile, blacks in the grassroots or with pro-black or conscious mindsets can't be trusted for some reason because they're quote unquote frauds. That's why I intend to do what I'm trying to do, family. I intend to be a hub of black knowledge, but also that of entertainment as well, too. This is why I'm going to do everything in my power to make the Cool Colas brand a hub of great content that anyone, especially our people, can enjoy. But also, I want to keep my people informed on issues that involve them that other people aren't going to tell them. I just need the backing, the support, and the love of my people who listen and follow me to make this come true. But I think that it's only possible if we open our eyes when our enemies make certain content and we look at the messages that they place in them. Because at least to me, at least with me, you know where my heart is. All y'all who follow me know where my heart is. You all know that I care very deeply about the black community, about black people. You know, I and I, I think that's why it's very important for you to back someone like me. And, you know, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. And, and this is a this is a really, really important thing here. You got to look back at the past. Look back at what happened with Malcolm X. Don't make the same mistake that our people in the past have made, our ancestors, I guess, have made when it came to protecting and supporting an outspoken black man. Because I, too, am an outspoken black man. And what I want to do is just encourage you all to really try to not just listen to the things that I'm trying to the, the game I'm trying to give you but I also want you to promote people who have integrity and who care about the black community and they show it in their words and in their actions and the things that they say that they're going to do and I'm doing all that y'all let's be real I'm doing all of that so we need to do everything in our power to try to put our people who have shown that they care in the best possible light. Anyway, y'all, that is the episode for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all got something new from this and were able to learn something. I will have a lot of episodes to come in the future, so continue to stay tuned. I hope you all have a good day, and I will be talking to you all in the near, fu ah, <laughs> in the near future. All right, y'all. Peace.